All right, guys, here we are back again. Um, today, I just want to kind of go over some uh, common uh, mistakes, uh, common drawing mistakes that, that young people make, or that I should say young artists, because you don't have to be a young person in order to be new at art. And, um, and so I just made a bunch of sketches in here, and each one of them has a bit of a problem to it, right? So um, we'll start off with this one here of the person holding a baseball bat. And we'll kind of talk about, you know, the drawing itself doesn't look bad. I didn't draw all the fingers in, obviously it's missing a head and legs and things, but the arms are in there. I got this baseball bat. So what's wrong with this? Well, one of the big problems that's going on here is something called continuity or line flow, right? And so if we kind of take that idea of, of a plumb line or make an, an axis for this, we can just put in a line down the baseball bat and out the other side. And I think right away what happens is the issue with this is very clear, right? So um, a lot of times you'll see um, young people having issues where things don't really line up, right? Or I should say young artists. Um, but when we're looking at, at um, you know, classic kind of drawings that, you know, have issues like this, it's usually ones that are kind of broken into sections. So if we draw a sword over here, and so a sword has this blade, and then it has, you know, this kind of section in between here um, that breaks the, the continuity in here. And then what happens is, instead of continuing on with this continuity going forward down here, um, people will uh, put things kind of in on a crooked, right? It'll go in crooked like that. Or if it's not crooked like that, you'll get things where you have, um, it's not crooked like that, you'll have things where, where um, you know, it's not lined up, right? Like this kind of a thing, which is what's going on over here, right? And, or, um, you know, um, all kinds of different issues with the kind of larger structure or continuity of line that's going on. So what you want to do in order to keep it kind of straight is, you know, make sure that you're thinking about where the center of the whole object is. So when you go in to kind of draw this handle hilt section that's down here, you can keep it all lined up. And it's usually, like I said, on, on things that have an interruption. So if we're thinking about our baseball bat here, now and the handle is off to one side, um, what we can do, of course, is look at our drawing and try to kind of, you know, put a, a line in like this and, and then realize, oh, I just got to move this handle over a little bit. You know, and it's easy enough to just kind of move it over. And now this drawing is really good, right? So not only is it, uh, you know, got some good arm and body and the, and the hands are holding the bat, but the bat has good line continuity. We can look at, and of course we're kind of looking at diagonals here, but really we would call that a vertical because it's up and down, um, even though it is a, technically a diagonal, but it, this is you know, dropping kind of a plumb line of sorts. Um, here we can really think about um, the same thing again. So here's this water pitcher, right? And we think about um, this line that's happening that's um, kind of the edge of the table or maybe it's the horizon line. But if you notice as I go along like this, the drawing looks pretty good, right? As I go along like this and I kind of jump to the other side, I'll notice that this is too low, right? So if I kind of just pull something in like this, you'll notice, oh wow, the continuity is way off in this and I really need to make this drawing line much higher, right? So it needs to go up in space. So that is also uh, one of the real common mistakes. And it's really just the same kind of mistake that was found uh, in this baseball bat uh, um, idea here. One of the other ones that I see a lot of the time is uh, when you're making um, um, forms, right? There's some issues with forms. So here we were working with ellipses and I kind of went over some of this in a different lesson earlier, but um, you got to remember that the, the top ellipse and this bottom ellipse 
should be mirrored, right? And the common mistake here is this isn't a bad looking cup, but the bottom, it can't just be this kind of straight flat line, right? Instead, the bottom ellipse needs to be matched up to that top ellipse. So this line that comes in here and this line that's over here should be identical, right? This one, this one, and this one. Um, and that's something that you kind of see uh, very, very, very commonly, right? All of these are super common uh, mistakes that you see in um, any young artist's work. So besides the ones that we have here, I got more, we'll flip the page, we'll look at this side. Here I have a couple of pictures of a tissue box that I drew. Let me kind of look at the top here. And these couple of boxes of, of tissues um, are not horrible drawings, right? It's got a little tissue sticking out of the flap and the top. Um, both of them have the same thing. But if you really take a good look, you'll notice that this one here suffers from the same issue as the other one, which means that there's no mirroring going on, right? So we have this top plane that's happening on this box, but then the bottom plane has been replaced with a straight line. So we need to remember to mirror the planes, right? So if we have this plane up here, the plane that's below it should actually match up to that plane. So this line in particular, right? We need to think about that line going back into space, right? So this one is no good. Um, over here, we can see a different example of this. So if we kind of like think about this example where we have um, this being flat, that doesn't exist in here, right? In fact, um, this is actually really well drawn at the bottom and there's no big issue here. In fact, this plane that's on the side here and the one that's on the front are also drawn very, very well. The big problem here is the top of the box and you'll notice that this is coming up and down like the roof of a house. And instead, it's not uh, going back in space like a plane should. So when we're thinking about you know, how to change this one, we have to remember that this line and the line that's back in here right, are mirrored lines. And then this would move forward along this plane here. So we can get the idea of where the big problem was, right? Which was, you know, this went up too high in the corner, right? This corner. So, um, you know, that was the problem, the big new no new. -no. All right, now, as I kind of pull down here, I have two kind of slightly cartoony drawings of, uh, of girls, and each one of them has a different issue. Um, when we're drawing things and we're not really thinking about underlying structure, right? Um, one of the big things that happens is we skip kind of large parts of things. So um, I, if, I, if, I was, if you were here with me, I'd try to ask you to pick out the issues with these two. Um, but if you take a good look and you look at this jawline that's here, you're gonna realize that if I start to think about this having a oval or egg type shaped head here, um, there's a big issue. It's got a big old flat spot, right? So if I kind of pull her jaw back and I start to think about the shape of a head inside of here, um, we'll notice that there is a large section of her head that is missing in this drawing, right? In fact, it would fit in here. So this part actually looks pretty good as it comes around, but the part that came up along here was missing, right? So there's a big flat spot, and what we need to do is to make sure that we get that part also covered with hair, right? So we think about her hair coming down in that way. So um, big areas where we're kind of not considering the underlying structure, but what we're doing is just considering the lines that are on top. Um, we can run into some issues right away with things like um, uh, having uh, incomplete structure, right? So a flat spot on your head or missing part of your head is not a good thing. Another one that happens pretty commonly is um, where hair is covering things again when you're drawing someone's face and not thinking of underlying structure, 
you can run to this issue where you start to replace sections uh, uh, that are covered or moving them over because your mind thinks that you should see more of them. So if we kind of take a good look at her, you're going to realize that this eyeball is wrong, right? In fact, if we uh, were to really kind of correct this eye, uh, we would get rid of almost all of it, right? And just have the slightest little tiny bit of this eye kind of sticking out from the corner in here in order to um, get um, this drawing corrected, right? So when we're thinking about, you know, placement of things, um, we have to make sure that we're keeping kind of consistent with some of the measurements or structures of the face, right? Um, um, and really thinking about, you know, where things kind of land at rather than just um, where just what our mind kind of makes up in our head, right? So I see this all the time, especially with, uh, uh, with uh, people trying to draw anime drawings. They're always trying to draw some crazy eyeball that doesn't actually exist in there, where we've actually filled out plenty of the face in there, but what we haven't done is uh, really kind of think about the structure of the face as to where eyes are placed. Uh, instead, we're trying to squeeze it in, right? Or we're trying to squeeze it in. One of the other things too is uh, people when they're drawing eyes, um, having inconsistencies in eye size or where eyes are looking, right, is one of the big problems. So if we're thinking about these couple of little sketches I stuck in here, um, they're two different sizes, right? So one's bigger and one's smaller. Um, so, I mean, that's fun if you're kind of making some wonky cartoons, but um, the more realistic you want your drawing, you need to make sure that the eyes are a little more mirrored than that. Not that one that couldn't be slightly closed, like it was winking, but um, size uh, and shape of the eye being mirrored back and forth is pretty important. Okay, now we're gonna flip over to my last big example for this time, which is um, what I like to recall, what, uh, this one here. Um, I, I gave two different examples off the top and I actually drew the third one down the bottom there a little. Um, um, what's wrong with these drawings? Now, obviously they're not complete, but the big problem that I have in here is uh, what I like to refer to as macaroni elbow, which is this curved elbow that sometimes you see in cartoons, but doesn't really belong in very realistic drawings, right? Instead, it kind of looks like one of those macaronis for macaroni and cheese, right? So if we think about you know, what macaronis look like, um, that's, you know, macaroni and cheese elbow. So um, macaroni elbow or elbow macaronis are what these pasta are actually called. Um, and in doing that down here, um, you're, you're not thinking about the underlying structure or your arm doesn't actually curve, right? Another one is this one here where obviously this person is thinking through this drawing a bit more and they don't have a curved uh, elbow, right? So there's no macaroni elbow there, that's cool. So what is the big problem? They've added another elbow, right? So there's not three different joints in your arm, this one at the top of the arm, one in the middle of the arm, one at the bottom of the arm. So if you're thinking about joints, you don't have one here and one that's here, right? You only have one elbow. So um, that's one of the other issues that I see a lot with drawing arms is, uh, is other joints just being kind of randomly put in um, or joints being completely taken out. So if we were kind of trying to just go through and, and do this exact same drawing again, um, one of the things is the shirt, right, just fits to the arm. So we can get in there and kind of draw this section in and then we got that nice turn to the arm in here as it goes down. So good elbow, right? Um, and that's really most of the most major issues when you're kind of thinking about uh, what to do in a drawing. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing. So if you're making an image, right? And here's one of the drawings I was working on before, and you're running into some problems where you say, well, I'm not totally happy with this. Like maybe over here for me, I'm not 100% happy with the way that this 
body is curved down and sections that are in this part of the drawing. Um, what can I do to correct this on my own, right? So that I'm not really sitting around and wondering, did I fall into some of these common mistakes? And for some reason, I just can't see them today, um, even though they might be just really blatantly there. And one of the solutions is to work with a mirror. So the whole idea of working with a mirror is to be able to look at things in a new way, right? And um, once you've kind of looked at something for long enough, it's very difficult to see it anymore. So here I'm looking at that image now in the mirror. And you know what? As I look at this part of the drawing that I was thinking there were some issues with, I think I made him a little too wide across the torso here. And, um, and I think that is really one of the big reasons why this drawing isn't working out. Maybe he's a little too stout. So um, that could really be something I go back and edit in the drawing now that I'm kind of seeing it from a different perspective. And this really dates back all the way to, um, to Leonardo da Vinci, right? In fact, da Vinci's treatise on um, painting, he talks about the mirror that he carries with him for self-correcting his work. Um, and it's just like this kind of concept that's going on here. So I kind of hope stepping through some of these uh, common mistakes in drawing with you guys has helped out. Remember, a lot of it's about continuity in line. It's about mirroring um, um, uh, your image, right? And then it's about thinking about structure. Uh, and I really think that that's a lot of the most major issues that happen in uh, young artists' work. All right, guys, I'll see you later.